Hey, I'm getting my PS5 very soon, and I still haven't finished the Dick 2. I got so distracted. I, was, I started playing Bloodborne, and that didn't go well. <laughs> I moved on from that, and then I started playing the Dick 2. I was like, I was like, I was But now I'm playing the Dick 2, and I'm getting my PS5 in a few days. I haven't been playing the Dick 2 in a few days. Because as soon as I get my PS5, I, I just want to stop playing Spider Man 2. I'm so excited. scores, audience reviews. There's some people that are like not a fan of certain aspects of the game and for example they make they force you to play as many games, which I always found personally. I also don't know why like they make to do that. You know obviously we have player inclusion and the players do it's like every game. Regardless, I am a Spider-Man fan, so you know, I'm enjoying it. video of this guy was talking about just, you know, this podcast he was just having a conversation about children and having children he's like I just want to have one kid and he already has one kid he's like I don't want to have one so he's basically saying he's okay with just having one kid and all that sort of stuff and like, the, the, the girl who was a guest on the show was like you know if you, if you don't want to have one kid you don't want to have one kid you don't want first of all this whole thing of not having kids. Yeah, it's interesting. It's an interesting philosophy. But even having one kid, um, it's problems. Right? Even just having one, it's problems. Because you think about it, a couple has one child. If every couple decided we're just gonna have one child, uh, the population would shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink until. Society collapses, right? You really need to have two, minimum two, to just just two patients. But really and truly, people should have a three or four minimum, three or four minimum to grow the society. And again, this is this is not a. issuing any sort of mandate or anything, I'm just, uh, I'm espousing a view. So, you know, people will say that the world is overpopulated, and it's just not. And uh, something fundamental that people need to understand is that as a society becomes more advanced, you need more people to maintain it. It's a very simple concept. So, people will say the ideal population for Earth is 2 billion, for example. Yeah, well, 2 billion where? 
because many, 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 many countries will collapse if the world's population sees that drastic decline. Many places will cease to exist. At least as we currently know them and understand them, they will regress completely to the point that they might as well not exist anymore. Uh, and you're seeing this in places like Japan. So I'll give you Japan's a pretty uh, good example for this. They, they have one of the worst population crises in the world. They've been they declining rapidly. And what, what that's doing economically and socially for them is with, with the, that they should use their small towns as an example, their villages. These villages are being gutted. Um, many of them are under serious threat of just simply disappearing because people keep moving out, because it's becoming more and more inconvenient to live there. Because, you know, there's no people. When there's no people, there's no taxpayers, and there's no reason to maintain the area people from the government's perspective. So when they just see these places just don't have a lot of people. So what they do is they discontinue train lines. So it becomes harder to travel to those villages. So for tourists, so let's say you're a town who depended, that depended uh, heavily, heavily on, on tourists, but now there's no trains going to your area anymore because the government is like, we, don't, we can't justify this, this expense, there's not enough people there and we're not getting enough money from there because of you know, taxpayers and all these sort of things, and they discontinue trains going to that place. So now tourists have to go out of their way to get there. And some might, but most don't. And people start moving out of those areas to go elsewhere as well. So, like, it's just not interesting if you're a tourist to go there anyway. So, you know, these places become shelves. And you have several places like that, and people have talked about this. I remember watching a, um, a, a Japanese YouTuber talking. I should share the, the video on my video channel a while ago. But if you scroll, you might find it. I think I shared it like a week or two ago. If you scroll, you might find it. I don't think it's that far down, to be honest. But anyway, um, that's a real thing that's happening. Like, towns, not vanishing, like, they're still there, but they're not what they once were, and people don't go there anymore just because they lost so much of their cultural significance. And this is something that happens in the space of a few years, and it's happening rapidly to a lot of places, and I remember reading yesterday 744 municipalities in Japan are at risk of simply disappearing. Like literally just they're not there anymore because people have moved out. Or people weren't being born. And then as a consequence, less and less people live there, they lose funding, people moving out and the places no longer exist. That's happening and schools are being shut down and all these sort of things. And if it sounds like I'm Exaggerating, it's actually worse than what I'm saying. It's, it's a lot worse than what I'm saying. The crisis in that country when it comes to population. So, people say population decline is a good thing. No, it's not. No, it's not. Because as, as a country builds itself, it, it grows, you know, the culture grows. Um, they make advancements in technology and all these sort of things because human resources, right? Intellectual capital, people who are building, artists, all these things, that's what comes with a growing population. So when you decrease in the population, you regress, you go backwards, you don't go forward, you go backwards. People love the culture of Japan. When it's losing a lot of this cultural heritage and a lot of these sites, a lot of these villages, and the, the youth is becoming more and more disconnected from the traditions that built the country, you know, they're becoming more secular minded, they're becoming more modern, and adopting a lot of Western ideology as well in many cases. And it, it, Japan just starts to look like the rest of the world, it, it, it gradually loses 
the things that make it unique. Combining this with a rapidly plummeting population, oh my god. It will cease to exist. Like the whole country will cease to exist in the way that we know it. It will just be... It will be Japan... It will be like, like, like an imitation of itself. You know? And I don't think it's going to take that long for it to get to that point, to be honest. Now, right now, the time we're in now is the best. Based on the projection, it's the best time to visit Japan. Because it's, 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 it's just... No. It's, it's, it seems like it's only downhill from here. And I don't like saying that. I don't want that to be true. But I think now is the best time to visit. Because I don't think it's going to get better. Unless they do something about this population crisis. And they also... The attitude of the youth in terms of just abandoning the things that made the country interesting, you know? So, yeah. Some people will say, like, people don't have children because of the economy, you know, which, well, I do, I do agree that economy is wrong. Well. Number one, I, I do think there are workarounds and there's economy issues, but also, even if we excuse the people that are like, I can't afford to have children. There's still a lot of people that can afford to have children that just don't want to. They just don't want to. And you know, people will say, like, like it's, it's my right to do what I want. Fair enough, but at what point does someone say, I need to do this because it needs to be done? The country will fall away if, if we don't all, like, just put our personal whims aside and just do what's right to save our beautiful nation. At what point do people reach that conclusion? Is that, or is that just off the table? Like, it's not important to save your country. And save all these beautiful cultures, cultures that just cultivate your country. That's not important. Is there any point that you have to do it? Great urgency because now is the time it's not going to get more ideal after this it's going to get less and less ideal it's going to get harder and harder the longer you wait and um, the, the country's economic situation is losing taxpayers the tax base is shrinking by 2016 I think it said one quarter of the population will be wait no I think by 2050 actually very soon Large, large, already, it's already the case that a large part, percentage of the population is very old in uh, Japan, but uh, very soon they're going to have more old people than young people. And a quarter will be like 65 years and older, and I wonder what percentage will be 50 years and older and all that sort of stuff. And eventually it'll just be a country full of old people, and at that point, at that point, they're finished. They're gone, they're done. You have more old people than young people, then you're finished. It's such a depressing society as well. Imagine you just go out and you just see old people. You never see that many young people. That's a depressing place to live. No offense to old people, of course. But you know, you want to see youth. You want to see young people moving around, being young, running society. And, and career situation is worse. Even if you think Japan is bad, oh my gosh, careers. And Korea is worse because it's right next to North Korea. And North Korea is salivating and it's just waiting. Because it knows that once these people are weak enough, because the, the population is like just plummeting, once these people are weak enough, they can just take over. Now, it might be difficult considering that uh, South Korea's allies and all these sort of things, but you know. Is also a nuclear power. They've got nukes, so people might think twice before messing with them. And uh, North Korea and South Korea have been at odds with each other for a long, long time. Um, you know, just the other, not much longer, like a month or so ago, I was reading about how they're testing missiles right next to the South Korean border. 
just as a display of power people are just testing this out and they, they always send stuff over each other's borders like I think North Korea sent like parachutes like these packages with, with poop with, with, with animal dung into this into South Korea which is uh very petty aggression but yeah 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 it's not a, it's not good that are, on top of all the problems that come with pop, rapid population decline and they have the worst birth rate in the world South Korea the worst in the world um on top of that having an enemy like North Korea right next to you oof it's a recipe for disaster man. it's a recipe for disaster but anyway um, I just think about you know, the concept of, of, of multi-planetary travel and, you know, you got Elon and he's, I don't know if y'all saw how they, they caught a rocket, it fell from space and they had a little tower that, that received it, it caught it. So this is, the, like, this is like the first time this has happened, but reusable rockets now, which is insane. It's a rocket booster to be precise. But it was such a wild video to watch this thing falling from the sky, dude, and then it activates its jet jet propulsion and then it slows itself down and the tower the end kind of, the tower catches it with these arms. Well the tower wasn't moving. The the the, the, the booster kind of aligned itself and lodged itself in. But it was such a unbelievable thing to witness. And what that'll do is, um, you know, that makes these rockets reusable, these rocket boosters reusable, because they're very expensive to build, and they're multiple stories high, like they're, they're like skyscrapers, basically. The, the size, and they're unbelievably expensive to make. And what NASA used to do is, they'll just launch these things into the sky, and they'll just, they'll just fall in the sky and, and, and fall into the ocean. You should just dump them in the ocean. You know, which is crazy. <laughs> that takes littering to a whole new level, you know. But now, with uh, SpaceX's innovation, these things can be reused, and they're not going to pollute the ocean and all these sort of things. But, but what that does, making it reusable, rapidly reusable, well, they can be reused very, very quickly. Uh, making them rapidly reusable means we can go to space more often. Which, which brings us closer to this this dream of humanity, you know, living on other planets and stuff. But going back to this idea of people not wanting to have children, how, if you can't populate Earth, how are we going to populate places like Mars? You know, right? this idea of humanity colonizing space and existing on multiple planets, it's not possible with the current mindset a lot of people have these days. Man, I just don't want to have one child. I just don't want to have kids at all. All this sort of stuff. It's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. It's not possible. You have to have the will to survive. And you have to have the desire to see humanity flourish and reproduce and, and be fruitful. So if you don't have that, it's not possible for us to conquer space. So... It's not enough to have the technology. You have to also have the will. You have, you have, you have to have the culture to conquer space. You can't, you can't have people that are just like, they don't believe in having kids, they don't like kids. <laughs> they don't like humanity either, they think humanity is a cancer, all this sort of stuff, which is such a, a wild thing to say, right? I can't imagine thinking about other people as cancers and all that, but anyway, there are, there are people who think that way, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, um, I just think about how Earth is so ideal and just in terms of the conditions. This is our home, it's meant for us, it's made for us. And, it's very easy to, to flourish here. The conditions are just ideal. And these ideal conditions will fail to reproduce. At, at, at least, um, 
at a rate that can sustain our growth in this modern era because we become very nihilistic and these ideal conditions were failing so imagine you go to a planet that every, where everything is working against you you're not meant to be there <laughs> and yeah, I just think that hardship and you know, that, that pushback is people will crumble, they won't, they won't survive, they'll die. Within the first generation, these people will die. Like, you have to have people there that are just committed to repopulating and, and are, are fully, fully on board with that idea. Like, it's just part of their core values to have children and to love those children. And, they just love humanity. You have to have people that love humanity, man. It's just team human. None of this nonsense. Oh, human beings are, are parasites. And, oh, no, no, human beings are just... If the, the world would be better, human beings are gone. All this... Oh, yeah, we don't need people like that. And, you know, the, this is sound to me. But the fortunate thing about people like that is they're probably not going to reproduce. So we don't have to deal with them for, for much longer. To, <laughs> which sounds mean, but it's just... Like, honestly, it's such a terrible mentality. But people like that are not very likely to reproduce anyway. So, I don't know. There's a whole lot of them. There's a whole lot of them. But yeah, if this whole thing ends up happening, this idea of conquering space, if it ends up happening, um, you're gonna need people that are serious. You're gonna have people that are wishy-washy and just wanna have fun. 24-7. You need people that are like committed. They, they, they love humanity, they love children, and they have strong family values, and these are the sort of people that will repopulate a place like that, that will populate a place like Mars. And did they talk about the, the moon of Jupiter perhaps being a place we could settle as well and all these sort of things you need serious people to, to take on tasks like that you can't have people that are not serious but anyway um, it'll be an interesting mission I'm gonna do my part here on earth find a nice girl have kids I don't think five I think five is a great number for me I, I, I'd love to have five by the way, I was thinking, so you were talking about the economy and how that makes it hard for people to have kids. Um, I was thinking this, in, in tough times, when push comes to shove, and we're like, and in situations where if you don't reproduce, your culture will collapse, your country will collapse, you will lose everything you love if you, if, if, if a nation is unable to reproduce, we saw this with ancient, ancient Greece. That was really the thing that collapsed them. Because they experienced the same thing in population decline. And it eventually collapsed the economy. And collapsed their, 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 their civilization. Um, if you're unable to reproduce, you will, you will fade into your own right? It's just, it's just a rule. You'll be forgotten. You will fall away. Um, Keeping that in mind, people should be willing to do whatever it takes. So, I'm thinking families really need to start forwarding it. There are a lot of people who kick their kids out of the house, who don't support their children, and whatnot, whatnot. People should really hunker down and come to like Japan and South Korea where the birth rate is dismal. Like, listen, stay with us, bring your spouse, whatever, let's live together, let's have children together. Well, well that's not good. Like, you have children with your spouse and will help you take care of them, will provide the diaper and will get food or do this or do that. Be like family needs to work together. That's how it usually works in many parts of the world anyway. It's already people already do that. This communal living. Your family is your community, you take care of each other. And the grandparents are heavily, heavily involved. They share the burdens with you so that you're not alone. All these sort of things. People need to have that attitude, but it's kind of like splintered right now. Where you know, kids from the countryside they move to the city, they rarely see their parents, they're not thinking about kids, they're just thinking about career, 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 maybe traveling from now 
now and then going out drinking with your friends There's, like the kids are lost in, in your mind when you're living that sort of lifestyle it's just about having fun and chasing a bag right um But I think the values are going to have to change drastically. If they want to save Japan, South Korea, Italy's in trouble, Germany's in trouble. Uh, the whole of Europe and North America is experiencing very similar things. Their birthdays are not as bad as Japan and South Korea, but kind of like Italy are very bad. And uh, like Germany and uh, a few other places, very, very bad. America is just it's, it's nice. it's falling. I think they've fallen below replacement rate, so they're literally shrinking right now. America, let's see. Um, let's see. You, need, you need a birth rate of 2.1. That's 2.1 is the, is, the, uh, is the replacement rate. Fertility rate, let's say fertility rate. Find out. It's giving me all these numbers. One point seven. Damn. One point seven. If yeah, they're supposed to be two point one, they're at one point seven. And by the way, people will say like, "This is why we need immigration." Immigration doesn't fix the problem, guys. It really doesn't. You know how many people have to immigrate? And even then, it's, it's just not. It's, first of all, it presents a whole bunch of cultural issues. Too. So, a, a place like Japan, for example, which is very culturally distinct, you can't just immigrate a bunch of people from different parts of the world. You've got Italians, you've got Greeks, you've got people from Nigeria, you've got people from I don't know, Mexico. You just import everyone, and their cultures and values are very, very different from yours. Yeah, yeah it's not going to work out. Japan is Japan because of the Japanese and people who move into the country have to assimilate and assimilation takes time and it's a very curated, slow process and it has to be done carefully and diligently, right? So you can't just open the floodgates because that will present a whole bunch of problems. On top of that, immigrants tend to... So when it, what people have noticed when it comes to like this thing of, of um, having children, if, you, if your country just has the problem of not having kids, the immigrants tend to mirror that as well. Like they stop having kids as well. I, I think it's just a function of affluent societies, unfortunately. It doesn't have to be this way, but I, think, I do think some people just get very comfortable and start to think that they don't need to have children when they have money, which is such a weird thing, right? Which also begs the question of whether the economy argument is legitimate because people will say, if I just have more money, I'd have, I'd have kids. But they don't say that, actually. What they say is, I'm not having kids because I don't have money. They, they don't say, if I had money, I would have kids. I think a lot of people who say that, even if they had money, they still wouldn't have kids. But they're just using the economy as a kind of a scapegoat. Like they just don't want to have children, regardless, which is unfortunate, right? Because of the reasons I, I laid out. But um, yeah, but immigration is just not going to face the issue because it's not a long-term fix. It, it, it's like, it's like patching, it's like putting like a patch on a sinking ship, like there's a leak in the ship and you just put a, a, a cloth patch. Yeah, it might, it might temporarily halt, halt or block the leak, but it's not going to last for long. You're going to have to address the root issue. You're going to have to get to work and really do, do the necessary things. And the core population, the native population has to be reduced pass on their culture and values to the children for, for Japan to survive. But yeah, the mindset has to change, man. People have to be like, really be on board with the mission. They have to have the mindset of like, we will do whatever is necessary. You know? These villages, like, 
they should support each other, man. Maybe they're supporting each other. Communities coming together to really, like, help. Instead of living alone, like a couple getting married and go, going off and living alone, maybe for a period of time you live with your parents so that you can have that support. You know, if you're not paying your own rent in some other separate apartment, you can contribute to rent at your parents' house and so, sort of things. And there are people who say that, oh, that's terrible, I never want to do that, da, 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 da. Well, when the country's collapsing, hey. <laughs> Again, it's a mindset. It's just about, like, what are you willing to do to save your country? Are you willing to do what's necessary? So we'll see. But you have to have that will to survive, man. You have to have that will to progress. If you don't have it, man. Peace, I guess. It's nice knowing you are. Yeah, pay for Japan, pay for the world, really. Like, I am telling you, I don't know what to do. I guess one real realization I've had is that you can't really force people to do something they don't want to do. People don't do the right thing because it's the right thing. Oftentimes, people just do what they want to do. So even if it's the right thing to do, and like, guys, we need to do this because X, Y, Z, and people will still be like, I don't care. I don't care because I don't want to do it, <laughs> which is interesting, but you know. So I guess you have to market, you have to sell this idea of having kids. Maybe that's what we need to start doing, like even marketing children. That sounds weird. But you know what I mean, just the, the idea of family, love, right? Like raising amazing human beings and all these sort of things. People need to get excited about that. But it's hard, man. It's hard when the culture is just so against the, the idea. I think the culture is very anti-children, actually. It's very anti-children. Anti-family. It's becoming anti-marriage. It's just, the culture is just, ugh. It's not conducive for having a family right now. So it's difficult. It's difficult. But, I don't know, I think maybe things will get better. We'll see. I mean, we should be more optimistic. Have faith that things will turn around somehow, some way. People will wake up. We'll see. So let's have faith. I'll just leave it on that positive note. Let's have faith that things will be fine. Hopefully, things will turn around and will grow and, and, and flourish and be happy and have peace. You know, I like to brag that all my videos still do for the God. Thank you for this individual artist right now. Thank you for making the whole world and on the path to most peace, prosperity, and purpose. Thank you for blessing this person with wonderful people in my life. I love them, take care of them, bring the absolute best out of them. And thank you for maintaining the ones that are there to do, to do the same thing. Thank you for blessing this person with love and marriage, sustaining that love and marriage, and making it very happy. Well, thank you for blessing this person with the spirit of gratitude so they can give thanks for the wonderful things in their life. And by giving thanks, they can find peace, contentment, and attract even more blessings. Let your presence be felt in this person's life so that your God is real, that your love is be there for the good health of all my family. Please, all this person, I don't really care about you. My name is Brian Jesus. Brian Jesus, Brian. Amen, amen.